Kelly comp behind Miles Davis. It's magical, man. I mean, that guy is one of the great compers of all time. I mean, he almost had like a sixth sense for knowing when when Miles is going to take a break, you know? And then he'll play like a little tasty fill, not something that's going to derail Miles or, or, or break his train of thought, but something that's going to kind of further the overall musical picture, yeah. So, um, uh, uh, listen to good compers is what I would say. Um, do you know... Do you, you know this uh, guitar player named Jim Hall? Yeah. Check Jim Hall out, man. That guy's a masterful comper. Um, speaking of that, okay, that brings up a really good point um, for, for organ. Um, coming from, if you're coming from a piano background, one of the big mistakes that uh, piano players do when they, when they start comping on the organ is they just tr transfer what they already know on the piano to the organ, voicing-wise. And a lot of times it's just much too much, you know. That this, this, the sound is so fat, you can get by with just playing two or three notes instead of playing a big grip of a chord, you know. I mean, there's, there's a time and a place for that. But listen, I'll, I'll comp for a blues. I'm just on the lower manual. And I'll just restrict myself to two or three notes. <laughs>
good friends and one of the uh, best jazz drummers in town. Uh, the guy is seriously in deep, uh, one of the hardest working practicers that I know. Uh, probably the hardest. Again, going back to Lou Donaldson, made a lot of Blue Note records with Lonnie Smith on record. Some, I think Jack McDuff uh, is on some of them, and John Patton might be on some of them. Uh, but he went through a period of recording a bunch of Boogaloo records. Um, there's a tune called Alligator Boogaloo. Which one is that? That's the one that goes. Thank you.